Uh, so CBH, we are Australia's largest cooperative. I uh, also believe we're the second largest privately owned company in Australia as well. So we're quite, quite a sizable organisation. Uh, our purpose, you can see at the very top there, so why are we here? We're here, our purpose is to create and return values to growers. So we heard Darren talk earlier, Darren's exactly the kind of grower that we exist for. Okay, our competitive advantage, we are a large co-op, we're 100% owned and controlled by the growers of Western Australia. So, you know, everything we do comes back to how do we benefit the growers. Leading co-op, focus on creating and returning values, we're an integrated supply chain, so we have assets from the storage and handling part of the business all the way through marketing and trading, we even have processing assets as well. It's a little bit old, that $2 billion, it's probably closer to three, three and a half at the moment, so... Our people, we employ up to 3,200 people during harvest. So just to give you an idea, and we might talk about this a little bit later, our harvest casual bill this year for the 16.6 .6 million tonnes we produce was around about $40 million. So we're very interested in anything that can help us start harvest or start sites a little bit later, maybe close them a little bit earlier. That squeezes that $40 million harvest casual bill, which ultimately returns value back to the growers but our people are what make our business our business. Large producing state, I won't go through all of that stuff. We've had a run of fairly decent crops in the last few years. There you've got our average tonnage there of about 10 million. I think we're gonna, we, we do a 10 year trailing average. We think we're gonna upgrade that now to about 12.2 million tonnes. So our growers are getting bigger and stronger. We've got to keep up as CBH. Storage and handling there, you can see we get a little bit more than 90% of the grain that's produced in Western Australia comes to us and almost all of that is exported. So we're a little bit unique compared to the East Coast in that regard. Uh, it's actually 21 million tonnes of grain storage, but effective, it's about 15, 16. As you start segregating grain, that starts to shift around. We like to think we're world leaders in grain storage and handling technologies. We keep investing in our network and you can see there we've got things like a rail fleet as well and we start to we start to look where there are gaps or market failures or where we can just improve the lot of life for, for our supply chain, which ultimately comes back to the growers, because the grain's worth something when it gets to a marketplace. That's where we are, so you can see all the facilities there. There's some 200 sites in that network at the moment, but you can see the key is the four ports. That's where all our grain goes. Um, we've also got a network strategy that's going to start to, to pull those down to the 100 most important sites over time. And that's all about creating a return for growers in the way we manage the grain and the way we can efficiently get it out to market. We want to offer as much market capacity as we can so our growers' grain's on the market before other things come on stream. You saw how much grain is around in the world at the moment. We want to make sure our grain's at the front of the queue to be sold. You can see we've got a presence throughout the world. We want to understand what's going on in the world. We want to understand what kind of uh, actions the marketplace is happening in the world, how they're perceiving our grain and how we might, again, get our grain to the head of the queue. Flour, oat, we, we do a lot of milling now. We're actually in that third stage processing or second stage processing so that we can start to, two things, capture any value that might be there for the growers but also understand what it is that they want from our grain. So we feed that information back. So there's a market intelligence piece that we want to do as well. Right, so I want to talk about quality optimization because this is a real innovation and I want to talk to you how we did it and what it's done in the five years that it's been running and then maybe you can ask me what's coming next later or after this, but this is one of those things that only a cooperative would do. This is about giving blending opportunity back to the growers of Western Australia, back to the primary producer, giving them control that otherwise wouldn't be given to a primary producer. So it's after delivery blending of grain. And I'm going to demonstrate it so it'll make sense to you, okay? It's virtual blending, but clearly, physically, it's still got to happen. We've still got to deliver it to the marketplace what they buy. So it's blending digital infrastructure or di digital innovation with real-world supply chain and logistics management, okay? There's nuts and bolts that sit behind this stuff. We wanted to make sure it was as easy as playing solitaire, so ease of use. It's a complicated thing, blending grain, but growers know it intimately, there's some 32 different parameters that make up a grade of wheat, for instance. So the growers know this stuff intimately and they can do this on their farms, but it's hard work, you know, when it's 40 degrees and you're sitting there with a couple of augers and you're trying to do this, how can we get this better and how can we make it better for the customers at the end of the day as well? 
with 32 different parameters and you can blend down in the virtual system down to less than a tonne of wheat, so I think you can blend down to 10 kilos, that creates an enormous complexity if you give an auto option. So, you know, if you're thinking exponential, this gets exponentially difficult as a problem solving exercise that is different every time you throw something at it. So we have an AI option that sits in behind this thing. We essentially have three engines competing to find the best possible solution in what was limited to less than a minute. Because you could go on forever trying to solve this stuff. First year out, the growers could beat us. Second year out, we nailed it. Again, why? Control and flexibility. So as a growers co-op, you saw all the sites we've got, you know, with 4,200 grower members, we wanted to give them the control over their crop that they never had before. Previous to this, it was sort of a communal system that the stack would build its quality and only a couple of growers might benefit from that. And usually the grower that put in all the best quality wasn't able to benefit from it because someone with poorer quality stole it. The marketplace also benefited from the um, arbitrage opportunity that happened in quality. So we wanted to give that back. Improve grower logistics, reduce the need for on-farm blending. There's the quality banks I just spoke about. And also, from CBH's point of view, we're a volume game. So at the end of the day, we want tonnes in our system. The growers have built this system over 85 years, 83 years. And we wanted to make sure that system was working effectively for them. So in the past, it was just about storing and handling their grain. What other things can that infrastructure do to benefit our growers? And ultimately, this does remove a lot of inefficiencies out of the supply chain. So. The economic pie is the economic pie. If you can strip costs out of it, you pass those, those benefits back to every market participant. And we're able to do some of that. Just to give you an idea, we've stretched this to barley now, but this is mostly a wheat product. And you can see here we've got four different classes. This will be important as you start to see it in action. And you can see the different grades, how they can optimise up and down, and this creates complexity. And we have to go out and, you know, the growers, while they know this, they need to understand it in a lot more intimate detail when we roll this product out. All the hard varieties of grain can also become premium white um, varieties or classes, if you like. So you can go down from a Bonnie Rock variety can also be a premium white class, but a less magenta cannot be a hard class grain. So you can see there starts to be some you know, complexity there about how you segregate the grain in the system as well as in real life. And then you've got your noodle wheats and your soft class wheats as well. And obviously there's a price tree that sits on that, and we connected the price tree up as well. There were complicated rules. We had to educate people about this, not just growers, but our own staff. We had to educate the marketplace, consultants, consultants blending on behalf of growers. So we had to make sure that everyone was fully cognizant of exactly what, what it is we were putting in. So when you put in something like this, this is a big, big program. You don't just run in boots and all and just stick it in and go, it's going to work. So we did a trial. We did a very definitive trial in the first year. So six years ago, we got 216 growers. So that's the benefit of being a cooperative. You can go out and talk to your grower members and they can come along for the journey with you. So whenever you're about to put in a new innovation or new something and it's going to be industry-wide, you better make sure you've got your stakeholder management and the people that are really going to be affected on both sides of the fence here as well. So. We got 216 growers involved at, uh, I think it was five delivery sites. 114 of them utilised the system, so that's a pretty good take up for us. And you can see there at the bottom, you know, out of the nearly 300,000 tonnes that delivered to those five sites, we had 73,000 that was actually virtually blended up, optimised. Okay? And that gave us a bit of a, a feel for how the system might work and what kind of constraints we might not need to put in it to make sure that the customers were getting what they wanted at the end of the day as well. Because the trial was largely an unhindered trial. We wanted to see warts and all what worked and what didn't work with it. Not just from the virtual system, the digital system, but also behind the scenes. So we sent grain to our flour mills to, to mill for us. The post-blended grain, according to what the growers did, we made that mix, we sent it to our, our mill and we had them blend it for, uh, mill it for us. And you can do all the dairyology quality testing as well. We did surveys, we worked with individual growers, we tried to understand the on-farm benefits that it created in not having to blend as much, sending your truck straight through, not having to get your truck go around again to get the right grade so that you could blend it. We tried to understand all of those bits and pieces. It's turned out it's been one of the most popular products even today for our growers. So from the trial, 
89% of the growers that, that, that actually did the blending, so of the 114, I think it was. Yep, they got an increase. They had a two-day reduction in their harvest time. This is for the trial growers, at least. Uh, Seven-hour reduction in cleaning and blending. So these are things that are going to start stripping costs out of the entire economic pie, which is delivering grain and selling it on the market. They did like the more control. Uh, interestingly, some growers that had invested heavily on infrastructure to do this sort of blending were not 100% happy with us, you know, because there's, you know, there's an investment I've made to do this particular blending and now you're giving it to everyone. So not everyone wins when you put this stuff out there and you've got to be aware of that. Uh, and it's become a tool that just helps the growers do business. You know, and they've given that tool to, to their um, consultants as well for those that want to use that. Right, so. So this is our load net system where our growers can transfer grain. I'm just going to go to a, a training account for us, load net optimizer. And hopefully you get a feel for the complexity that's in here about how we've tried to simplify it. And there's a lot of lessons to be learnt in, in rolling out a product like this for the next things that we might want to do because to get this right, it takes some effort. I'll go to the training mode. So in here you can see these are the prices for grain in Western Australia today. We're focusing on the Kwanana ones. This comes from our daily grain system, which tries to collate grain. At least gives you a marker point of where things start. Growers can actually change these prices. So if a grower has a contract or something else, they can put their own prices in there. And you need that because you need to obviously rank either by quality or by price. So we could ref that's all good. I'll just go, I'll create a new one. So here on the left, you've got the grower's grain. You can see here, we've got a lot of loads. This would be a typical grower, decent sized grower. I'll just show you the types of parameters that are in the system. You don't have to show them all, but there's obviously there's some that matter more than others. So you've got protein and screenings, but then you, you start to see the size of it all. All of these things go into making up the quality of grain that a grower has to be worried about and CBH have to be worried about and the customers are worried about. Falling numbers is an interesting one. That's a really difficult one when you get that. That's probably the only one that is not really optimisable, but everything else is. So all of those things are optimisable. So there's our loads. I'll just show you the manual session first. So you basically you're creating a container that you're going to stick this grain into. And remember, we wanted to play solitaire with this, so let's do an APW one, and you create a lot. And you've got some general purpose wheat here, running at about 9.2. You drag that in, there's our solitaire at play, and you're creating what is a virtual blend on the other side. In year one, the growers could go through, and you can change this down too. You can do an individual tonnage. So we've got tons there. You can actually blend just a small part of the tons. You don't need to blend all of it. But we may want to blend that with, let's pick a different grade. We'll take APW1, drag it across. You can drag lots of grain across. And you can see there, we've actually got a blended grade of those two lots at ASW1. So ASW1 sits below APW2, sits above AGP, but the combination of those two loads is you're actually burning value. You can keep doing this though, right? You can keep picking up... Uh, let's go these two. I'll just do two for you. You can keep going and keep going until you get the blend you want. Or you can let the machine do it for you and we can go auto-optimise. You can see you can do it by two ways. You can do it by quality or by price. Just about everyone wants to do it by price. You can split the number of loads. So a split means instead of load by load, whole loads as delivered in the truck, you might want to go, I will allow you to split one of those loads. And it can be any one of the loads, which basically gives you down to 10 kilo limits. And that makes the problem much harder. You can do that, I'll just for the sake of it, I'll, I'll leave that for the moment. And I'm doing every unselected load. So all of these loads, we're going to give to the machine and tell us what it can do. But you could select just 
get me my GP, my APW1, my ASW, and blend that all together and tell me the best outcome you can. Get all the hard varieties, just give me the best outcome of that. You could target a contract or something. I'll do it all just so you can get a feel for what it's doing. So in the background, back at CBH, that is running through an evolutionary algorithm, an ant colony algorithm, and a linear algorithm, and they are competing with each other to give us the best result. And you can imagine every single grower that puts their loads in will have a different solution that's passing to those algorithms. It's just doing some checks now to make sure everything fits in the grades that it should. And here you can see the net effect there is $15,000 for this particular set of loads based on those prices. So this is some control that the growers in WA have had at least for five years now over their crop post-delivery into the system. Now, I know there have been others that have been starting to replicate it, but not to this degree. So this particular noodle grade, you can see there's all this. It's gone ANW1 now, and you can see it's got ANW2 loads in there making that up. I'll go down so you can see it. So that's one bucket. There's another one there. There's some APW, so you can see it did a better job than I did of trying to blend that grain away. We're very proud of this system in Western Australia. Of course, there's other stuff to do, but that combination of loads has given that grower $15,000 worth of benefit. But they don't have to accept any of that. But the moment they go submit, that regrades their loads in the system that is then presented to the marketplace. Now, clearly, some of the, the beauty of this system isn't just in the digital bit. It's how do we connect that behind the scenes to make sure the marketplace is getting what they've bought. So they've bought those tickets off those growers. And certainly in year one, and certainly through the trial, we did a lot of work with the marketplace. You know, they were very unsure of how this would work for them. They feel like they're giving that margin back to the growers. You know, and we were quite proud to say there is some margin you're giving back. There's some stuff that's coming out of the, the economic pie there that you're going to benefit from as well and some efficiencies. But yes, as a grower cooperative, that's what we're about. So that was a hard thing to do. But over the last five years, both, the, you know, the flour mills at the other end and the marketplace have come to accept this, and it's part of the way they do business too. The benefit of that over the last five years has been, just in the green value bit, not, nothing else, has been more than $150 million to the growers of Western Australia in that blending, that little green light. So clearly sometimes people don't put prices in, they do other blends and all that sort of stuff, but when they have blended it like that and there's a green figure there, minus all the reds that might have been there, it's more than $150 million bucks. The average is about $3.50 a tonne for the growers, and it's still going, and hence we've extended it to, to barley this year as well. So that's innovation that's real, that really happens. It took a long time to get it going, though. The trial, the trial, the trial was the most important piece, getting that right and getting the right feedback. So, for instance, the receival standard for wheat is 5% screenings. The optimised standard for wheat is 3.5% screenings. And that came about because of a, our ability to make sure we could blend that grain to the marketplace and what the marketplace really wanted to buy. Okay, so the marketplace is really buying wheat with 3.5% screenings no more, so that's what they wanted.